Ladies and gentlemen, people of the internet, today I will be breaking down the best Brave browser tips and tricks to make you a Brave power user and help you get the most out of the browser. Now, if you're a fan of Brave or you enjoy learning about innovative technology like cryptocurrency and blockchain, then you are in the right place. So please do consider subscribing and hitting that little bell notification button so you'll get a heads up whenever I post new content here on the channel. Oh, and by the way, if you haven't tried Brave yet, what are you waiting for? Try it for free using the link down in the description below and we can dive into these tips and tricks and you can follow right along with me. So let's dive into these tips and tricks. Starting with tip number zero, put Brave into hyperdrive speed. And yes, I did just start the tips at zero. This is a video about technology, so we start things at zero like computers do. So if you wanna optimize how Brave runs on your computer for improved efficiency and improved speed, you can run Brave with some small tweaks to do just that. First, let's do some minor settings updates. So within settings, navigate to the extensions tab and turn off anything that you don't use from this list. I turn off a handful of settings, which I'll show you here, and I also turn off Facebook and LinkedIn embedded posts because I don't care about them and I don't use them. Now, here's a cool secret way to boost efficiency in a little more sneaky way. On Windows, pin Brave to your taskbar and make sure all instances of it are closed. Then right click the Brave icon. Then within that menu that pops up, right click the Brave icon again. This will show you an options list that has properties as an option. Select properties. And once you're in there, go to the field that says target. You'll see a bunch of text in there that probably looks like gibberish. Go to the very end of that text, don't delete anything. And here is where you will place parameters that I'm going to show you. Now, the one that you wanna add is dash dash process per site, which will reserve one process slot per website rather than per instance. Now, if you have five tabs open per Twitter, without this flag enabled, it will run at least five processes, probably more. Now, this is unnecessary in most cases and disabling this duplication of processes will speed things up across the other tabs that you have. Be aware that running 15 tabs of YouTube and running the videos all at the same time might start to get sluggish no matter what you do, so don't do that to test this. You can also do this on Mac, but it's a little less easy to do. You can open up the terminal and run the command. This still, though, gets very clunky. So I'll do a separate video on how to more permanently set this up on Mac if you want, but that's out of scope for this video, unfortunately. Now, moving on to number one, customize that new tab page. The first tip I have for you is how to customize your new tab page and be on the lookout for a plethora of new customization features as they get released pretty consistently nowadays. Now on desktop, you simply need to open up a new tab, then go down to this little setting sandwich menu button that's like on the bottom right hand corner here, and you'll get a little pop up that gives you switches to change what does and does not appear on the new tab page. Now I've had quite a few people ask me how to turn off sponsored images and images in general on the new tab page so it's plain and this is how you do it. Now on mobile, you go into settings, new tab page, and then you hit these switches as desired just about the same way. Moving on to the next tip, enhanced bookmarks and settings import. So last year I posted a tips and tricks video that showed you how to import your bookmarks from Chrome into Brave. However, they have drastically improved this functionality now to make it even easier. So let me show you. Now, a prerequisite here is that you have your old browser still installed, but not running. So make sure all your browser windows are closed except for Brave. Now, if you're a Chrome, Edge, or Firefox user and you're switching to Brave, which is a great move, by the way, all you need to do is head over to Settings, Bookmarks, Import Bookmarks and Settings, select your current browser, the one you're moving from, from the drop-down menu and hit the import button. Now you'll see I installed Chrome again and logged in so I can show you this cool feature. And you can see my Chrome person one profile listed here in Brave. This means Brave recognizes my Chrome browser and can pull bookmarks, settings, and passwords from there without exporting anything from Chrome itself. Depending on the browser, you can import settings, bookmarks, history, save passwords, and more, but I recommend usually sticking just to settings and bookmarks and leaving the rest for security reasons. Those passwords are precious cargo. Now, the next tip I have for you is how to boost your privacy on Brave browser. For those who downloaded Brave as a measure to protect their privacy, make sure you take it to the next level by doing one simple thing. Make DuckDuckGo your default search engine. 
Here's the deal, Brave is great for stopping trackers, blocking ads and obfuscating your data wherever possible. But if you still use Google for all your web searching, they can still gather a pretty significant amount of data about you. DuckDuckGo is a search engine with no data collection and no other nonsense like that. And you can make it the browser default by going to settings, search engine, and selecting DuckDuckGo from the list. You can also go ahead and remove any of these options that you don't use or want. Now, keep in mind, DuckDuckGo is still the default right now out of the box when using the Tor private browsing tabs, which actually is my next tip for brave power users. And that is one I like to call going ghost. Now, if you're sitting there thinking, I want the best possible privacy while browsing the web without sacrificing user experience, well, I've got you covered. Actually, Brave has you covered. But anyways, here's how it works. Brave comes default with Tor private browsing built in which without getting into the nitty gritty and the technical, essentially masks your IP address and other unique identifiers from the open web and sites that you visit. Think of Tor like having millions of people wearing the same exact mask in a crowded place. You know that, you, that someone's there, but it'd be really hard to identify who each person is individually because they all look the same. You know they're there, but you don't know who they are. This feature augments the nonsensical incognito mode, quote unquote, that you see advertised as a privacy feature on other browsers. <coughs> Chrome, about which I did a whole video explaining the truth about incognito mode. If you're curious, pause this video and check it out. I'll post it up here in the YouTube card and in the description down below. Now to access this Tor browsing feature on Brave, just go to the little menu stack button, select new private window with Tor, and you're off to the races with the privacy that you deserve. Oh, and before the Tor army comes to attack me, I know this is not the best implementation of Tor in the world. And if you want the most robust Tor setup on planet internet, this is not the video that you're looking for. Now, the next tip is how to make more money. If you're on good old Twitter and you like to tweet and you have a reasonable following and you haven't yet enabled basic attention token tipping, then you're definitely missing out. Brave is now integrated with Twitter, so if you've connected up your account, users on Brave will see a BAT tip button that is active next to all your tweets and can send you a tip for your awesome memes and breakfast burrito picks. To enable this for your account, simply navigate to creators.brave.com, set up an account, link your Twitter, connect it up. And if you have a YouTube, Twitch, or website slash blog that you also use, you can get verified on those as well and receive basic attention token from other Brave users there as well. So boom, more money for you on to the next one. The next tip I have for you is how to add new features. One thing people don't often realize is that Brave can run almost all Chrome extensions natively just like Chrome can. So you can bring over your favorite extensions when you switch. All you have to do is go into Brave, enter Brave colon slash slash extensions in the address bar, which will bring you to your extensions menu. Then to install more, you just lose, use the little web store link at the bottom and click install. It's easy as pie. Now, a few words of advice here. Be careful about what you install. No matter how secure or private Brave actually is, a bad extension can still spy on you, so be selective. I personally only use a handful of extensions like PDF Reader, MetaMask, and things like Lollydurn and some free Bitcoin, and they work flawlessly in my experience. Now, if you run into one that doesn't run quite right, tweet at Brave Samson on Twitter or open an issue on GitHub. They're usually very super responsive to compatibility issues and other things like that. Now, this next tip is one people ask about all the time, and I'm stoked that I found a little workaround for this one in particular, and that is tab groups. Now, a question that I do get constantly is if Brave has tab groups and can they organize their tabs into color-coded groups? And I'm happy to report we have a solution. To enable tab groups, type brave colon slash slash flags into your address bar and hit enter. Then type tab groups into the search bar that appears. You should see an option that says tab groups and you can switch the drop down menu to enabled. Then quickly relaunch your browser and you can right click on a tab now to create a new group, add another tab to that group, add new groups, so on and so forth. So fantastic, enjoy tab group. This is a great feature, but be warned this is experimental right now. So your mileage may vary. This might not work perfectly, but this will serve you well if you need or love tab groups. Now, my next tip is privacy by default. Some users may wanna run Brave as a Tor browser or private browser every single time they use it. 
and it gets annoying to have to open Brave, then open a new Tor private browsing window and then do what you wanna do. It's a bunch of extra clicks. That said, I found a way to set Brave to open Tor windows by default. Using the same steps as our first tip with Brave closed, right click the icon for Brave, then right click the Brave icon again in that menu, open properties, and then add dash dash incognito to the end of the target field. Select apply, reload Brave, and you'll be greeted with the purple clad private browsing window every time you click the Brave icon. You can always turn this feature off again by just following the exact same steps we just did, except in this case, removing dash dash incognito from the target area using the same steps. No problem, no questions asked. So there were, I think, nine brave tips or little brave hacks that you can use to make your browsing experience better. I hope you got a lot out of this video. And again, if you have time to stick around, I have a ton more content about brave here on the channel, which I will link on the screen here for you to watch. So thanks again, guys, for watching. Have a great one. And until next time, cheers.